Hi, we're going to talk about enthalpy driven or entropy driven. Um, this term right here, here's a takeaway. Here's the answer if you want to know which way it's driven. It's going to be whichever value is spontaneous, that is what drives the overall reaction, the overall free energy. If you understand that, you're good to go. Now, if you'd like some examples, uh, let me give you just a little bit of a backstory here. Um, so when we use those terms entropy driven, enthalpy driven, it really defines the value that provides the energy for the overall reaction for that spontaneous free energy. So really we're asking what is making delta G negative? What's providing the negative? Because that indicates spontaneous energy available to do work. Um, so let me give you some examples. Um, and then I wrote a reference over here before I hit the examples. Just a reminder, negative delta H spontaneous, positive is endothermic, not spontaneous. That was exothermic. Negative delta S is non-spontaneous. That is going from disorder to order. It's becoming more organized. And then positive delta S is spontaneous because it's going from order to disorder. Everything naturally by itself falls apart. Um, Okay, so here we have a couple of examples for you. Uh, we have our hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. This is just the formation of water. And I put down values so you could see this explicitly. Um, delta H is a negative 483, delta S negative 88.8. .8. So notice negative delta H exothermic spontaneous, um, that negative delta S is going from disorder to order, becoming more organized, not spontaneous. And I wanted to point this out. You could see this. We're going from three gas, gas moles to two gas moles. It's becoming more organized, requires energy. That's why it's negative, not spontaneous. Now, overall, when we put all three laws of thermodynamics together, at 25 degrees C, delta G is negative, spontaneous, energy available to do work. And so I want to know what's driving this, what's making this ultimately um, a negative delta G spontaneous, we have some energy um, to do work. Well, it's easiest to see this if you set it up into Gibbs free energy equation. Delta H equals, or excuse me, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So I'm going to plug in my numbers. You've got delta um, H negative 43.6 minus um, the temperature, which was at 25 degrees C. I know that because of the knot. 298 and delta S negative 88.8. .8. So look at the signs. Negative times negative gives me a positive. I have my negative. What's going to provide the negative here? That. The delta H. And what do you know about delta H? It's spontaneous. So this right here is enthalpy. What provides the negative value for that delta G to make that spontaneous? Um, it is enthalpy driven. It's the negative from the delta H because it's spontaneous. Um, so really the fast way to look at this, if you have the value of delta H and delta S, whichever one is spontaneous, that's what drives it. So without even writing all this down, I could just go, oh, delta H is spontaneous. That's what's going to drive this. That's what's going to make delta G negative. Okay, let's look at another example. Example number two here. Um, so we're going to have this nickel compound liquid go to a nickel solid and a carbon monoxide. Here are my values. So delta H positive 189.9. So that's going to be endothermic, non-spontaneous because it's positive. Delta S positive 197. So this is spontaneous because it's going from order to disorder. I'm going from one mole to five moles. So becoming much more disorganized. Um, so that's spontaneous. Now notice, kind of interesting on this, delta G is negative when the temperature, I need to put this, temperature is greater than 379.4. So if I take a scenario, I've got that endothermic, that positive delta H minus a temperature, I just put it higher than 379, it's a 400 Kelvin, um, and the delta S is positive. So ultimately, what's making this negative? We have a positive value here from the delta H. Negative times positive, bam, there's the negative. So this is because, because of the fact that negative times positive, that positive delta S, it is going spontaneously from order to disorder. Kind of cool. This is what in part is providing the energy for this to be negative. So that will be entropy driven. Now, two words on this. Again, if you wanted to do this really fast, 
you just look at the signs in delta H and delta S. Delta H non-spontaneous, delta S spontaneous, and you say, oh, because delta S is spontaneous, that is entropy driven. Um, now, this is a good question. You could be asked at one point, is it spontaneous, or is it, um, is delta G spontaneous? At what point um, is this going to be entropy driven? And um, the temperature, of course, third law of therm thermodynamics, the temperature, of course, is going to play a factor in that. Um, so just know that it could be worded in this way. Look at my, um, the under the playlist, entropy and free energy for Gibbs free energy equation. I show you how to set G equal to zero so that you can find the temperature at which it will be spontaneous. If you don't know how to do that, check out that, that video and it just says Gibbs free energy equation. And I give you an example. Now let's look at evaporation. So evaporation, it's a liquid going to a gas. Energy has to be put into the liquid, so it's endothermic absorbs energy, endothermic absorbs energy to become a gas, so that's positive, not spontaneous. Now, uh, entropy, so translation, the molecules are still close and now they are 100% broken apart. This is random, crazy movement. It increases disorder, so it goes from order to disorder, liquid to gas. That is a positive, spontaneous. So what's going to provide the energy is entropy driven. Um, notice positive for your delta H, negative times positive gives you the negative. It's the delta S that's going to drive that, that provides, it's actually the temperature times the, the delta S is what's going to provide that energy. So here you would say entropy driven. It's the entropy and the temperature that is going to give the energy entropy driven. So when we say entropy driven, it's understood that it's temperature times entropy. Um, again, big takeaway comes back here. Whatever the spontaneous value is, delta H or delta S, that's what drives the reaction to provide the free energy. Easy way to look at it. If you have to think it out, put those signs. I still write out Gibbs free energy and we'll put the signs so I can see and go, oh yeah, I see that spontaneous. It provides the negative value on delta G. That gives us energy available to do work. That's what drives it. Okay. There you have it, enthalpy or entropy driven. You're doing so good. Thanks, have a great day.